so let's quickly take a look into these are the spring boot key features so that we will know more about spring boot okay so spring boot is nothing but just an extension of spring framework and uh, we can use spring boot to create a production ready spring based application without requiring developers to write a same configuration code again and again all right great so spring boot starters well, Spring Boot offers many starter modules to getting started quickly with many of the you know commonly used technology like Spring MUC, JPA, MongoDB, Spring Batch, Spring Security, Elasticsearch, etc. So these starter dependencies are free configured with most of the commonly used library dependencies. So you don't have to search for compatibility library versions and configure them manually. All right. So these Spring Boot starters will take care of you know maintaining the compatible versions and all the configurations for example spring boot starter data jpa dependency so this dependency whenever we add in our spring boot application then it will you know it will include all the dependencies required to use spring data jpa along with hibernate library dependencies all right so as a hibernate is one of the most commonly used jpa implementations so spring data jpa internal uses hibernate as a jpa provider all right so Spring Boot provides this dependency that is Spring Boot Starter Data GPA, GPA dependency. We need to only add this starter dependency. It will internally, you know, include all the required dependencies to work with Spring Data GPA. Okay. So one more example is Spring Boot Starter Web dependency. So whenever we add Spring Boot Starter Web dependency in our Spring Boot project, it will by default pull all the commonly used libraries while developing Spring MUC applications such as Spring MUC, Web MUC, Jackson JSON library, validation API and Tomcat uh, you know server. Alright so Spring Boot will do a lot of things for us we, not, we need to only add the starter dependencies. Okay so this is about Spring Boot starters. Alright now let's take a look into Spring Boot auto configuration. So Spring Boot provides auto configuration feature and this is a very very important feature so as a beginner you have to understand Spring Boot auto configuration in order to you know in order to explore how Spring Boot works behind the scene. Well what is Spring Boot auto configuration? Spring Boot auto configuration attempts to automatically configure your Spring applications based on the JAR dependencies that you have added in the class path okay so spring boot auto configuration it you know automatically configures your spring based application based on the dependencies or the jar dependencies that you provide in a class path well before you know exploring spring boot auto configuration let's first take a look into why do we need spring boot auto configuration so if you have already worked on spring framework or spring based applications then you have seen that spring based applications have a lot of configuration okay so let me show you a spring based application without spring boot so look at here this is spring muc hibernate crude web application so this is the project i have developed using spring muc hibernate okay i haven't used spring boot in this project and you can find this project on my github profile so go to spring mc tutorial and in this tutorial repository you can find spring mc hibernate crude web application project well in typical spring mc hibernate project we need to configure a lot many things for example so this is a java based configuration and in application context configuration file you can see a lot of beans created manually for example session factory if we use hibernate in spring mc application then we need to configure these three bins that is session factory bin data source bin and then transaction manager bin okay if we don't use spring boot then we need to configure these three bins if we use hibernate in spring mc okay so this is in all the typical spring mc applications okay this three bins should be configured so apart from that uh, we are using uh, you know we are using a jsp or time leap for that we are also need to configure view resolver right so that i have defined in webmc config class 
so look at here in this project i have used gsp so i have configured internal resource view resolver for gsp so this is a typical bin we need to configure when we use uh, you know gsp or time leaf as a view a layer so apart from that we need to configure dispatcher servlet so there are different uh, approaches to configure dispatcher servlet like either we can configure dispatcher servlet in web.xml that is deployment descriptor or we can you know configure dispatcher servlet using java based configuration okay so just understand like without spring boot we need to configure these bins for spring mac project so this is a typical configuration okay you, you can develop any kind of spring mac application and if you are using hibernate then you need to configure all these things when we use spring mac we need to configure component scan dispatcher servlet view resolver web jars and other things and let's say if we integrate hibernate or jp in our spring mac application then we need to configure data source bin entity manager factory or session factory bin and transaction manager and other things so these are the you know typical uh, configuration in all kind of spring mac application so we can automate these configuration right because these configurations are you know almost uh, available in all the spring mac application i mean in all kind of spring mac application we need to configure these things why not we, we automate you know these configurations so instead of writing this configuration in all kind of spring mac application again and again why not we automate these configurations well spring boot you know team has uh, you know comes with this new thought process they have automatically you know configured all these uh, all these configurations so whenever spring boot finds spring mvc dependency in a class path then spring boot will automatically configure component scan dispatcher servlet view resolver and if we add spring data jpa or hibernate in a you know in a class path then spring boot will automatically provide a data source bin uh, entity manager factory or a session factory bin and transaction manager all right so spring boot auto configuration basically you know configures all these configuration for us whenever spring boot finds spring mvc dependency and hibernate dependency in a class path so this is the best example for spring boot auto configuration so the next spring boot key feature is externalized configuration so this feature is very very useful whenever you want to deploy your spring boot application in different environments so basically this feature enables developer to work with the same application in different environments environments can be a dev environment qa environment uat environment or production environment okay so you can use properties file or yarn file that is yml file to maintain the you know configuration and uh, spring boot basically offers different configuration file for different environments okay you can maintain a profiles different profiles for different different environments all right and you can use annotations like add value annotation and add configure configuration property annotation to read the values from the properties file or yml file into spring bean configuration all right so this is a very very useful feature whenever you deploy your same application in different environments okay so the next spring boot key feature is spring boot actuator so this is one of my favorite feature okay so in our spring boot application we configure a lot of details all right and we need to monitor all these details right so spring boot actuator provides a lot of rest endpoints to you know view the health check uh, and the matrix a lot of things we can you know view by using spring boot actuator so spring boot actuator provides a wide variety of production ready features without requiring developers to write a much code for example we can use spring actuator to view the application bin configuration details we can use spring spring actuator endpoints to view the application url mappings environment details and configuration parameter values and we can use spring actuator provided rest endpoints to view the registered health check matrix okay so spring boot actuator exposes a lot of rest endpoints 
to monitor a lot of configuration details, environment details, URL, map, URL mapping details, health metric checks, a lot of things. All right. So this is a very, very cool feature that Spring Boot provides. Okay, great. The next Spring Boot key feature is easy to use embedded servlet container support. Well, this is a very cool feature. We can quickly run our Spring Boot application in embedded servlet container. Okay. So traditionally, when we build a web application using Spring Framework, then we need to deploy our Spring web application in external Tomcat server, right? So first we need to download the Tomcat from the internet and then we need to set up the Tomcat server and then we need to make a war file of our Spring MUC web application and then we need to explicitly deploy war file in a Tomcat server. So these are the steps involved, uh, you know, whenever we use Spring framework without Spring Boot. All right. So Spring Boot made it very easier to deploy our Spring Boot application in an embedded servlet container. Spring Boot by default provides Tomcat server as a you know default embedded servlet container. And uh, whenever we use Spring Boot starter web dependency, then it will automatically include Tomcat as an embedded servlet container. So whenever we run our Spring Boot application as a standalone, it will run in a default embedded Tomcat server on port 8080. We no need to create external war file and deploy an external Tomcat server. So we can make a jar file of Spring Boot application and we can run it as a standalone in uh, embedded servlet container easily. Okay. So these are the key features that Spring Boot offers. Okay. And uh, we are going to use these key features a lot in this course. So we just had a brief discussion about these features, right? And uh, going forward, we'll be using these features a lot in our, our in our Spring Boot tutorial course.